Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number seven, I believe, of the UBL, the Ultimate Battle League. I got a little bit confused because um, I did actually play week uh, eight last night, so I'm a little bit out of um, order here. I'm hoping for something to happen. We are two and four right now. However, I do believe that if we win out, um, we will have a chance of playoffs, uh, but here we go. We just see the Sneasel, Heatran, Breloom, Quagsire, Necrozma, and Mega Lopunny. So, straight off the bat, no Diggersby, which is wild. No Drudagon, Heliolisk. No Togekiss. That's kind of wild. But, this is a very interesting team. I did really expect the Breloom. I don't know why. He's only brought it once, I believe, in one match. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um... He's brought the Heatran, I believe, to every match. Low plenty as well. Necrozma almost every match. Quagsire only twice. <coughs> and Sneasel four times. So, that was all unnecessary to, to point out. But, what is the best lead? I kind of want to lead off with my Scarfed Meloetta. Although, I also really do like my Nidoqueen lead. I wouldn't also mind leading off with my Swellow. Hmm. Maybe Dianti is my lead. No, because Heatran makes a lot of sense as a lead. I'm going to try... I'm going to try to lead off with... My Nidoqueen. This Heatran is going to be a problem for a lot of the match. Uh, hmm. I guess we'll try to see whatever we can do against it. Um, as much as I don't want to, like, make them think that I'm just going for that, like, standard rocks lead, I do think Needle Queen will give me the best opportunity to kind of scout out whatever he's doing. Leads off with a Necrozma. That's interesting. Maybe he predicted my lead? Um, I could definitely see that. I kind of want to just lead off, um, sorry, go into my Swellow right now, and I think I will. I think I will just go into the Swellow. I think the play, I think he's going to want to try to either set up or get or get rocks up. Regardless, goes for a straight up Photon Geyser. Okay, I will get my Flame Orb, but uh, this is going to do a lot of damage. Yikes, that's going to barely miss out on, on the KO. But I'm going to be able to U-turn out. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if this thing tries to set up rocks right now, although he might just try to pick up the KO right now. Uh, it also wouldn't surprise me if this thing was scarfed. I could definitely, definitely see that. I mean, when I have a Necrozma, I constantly think about uh, matches where I, where I could scarf it. And I could definitely see it. I could absolutely see it. I mean, hell, I don't even know for sure... Whether or not this is a physical Necrozma. What does this thing? Necrozma. It does withdraw. Um. Goes into Quagsire. But yeah, what can I tell from Photon Geyser? I'm gonna give this Photon Geyser. Yeah, yeah, uninvested. Actually, that is interesting because by the looks of it, Necrozma is uninvested because uninvested Photon Geyser does 80 to 95%. That seems to be about right. Probably just got a decently preferential roll. I forgot to take a screenshot once again. But regardless, I think this would be pretty darn free Seed Flare to get off right now. Let's take a look at the bottom screen just to try to get something for the rest of this match going. Um, he doesn't really have the best switches in. He could bring in the Heatran, but that would scream Scarfed Heatran, and we can probably play around that. I'm just going to go for the Seed Flare. Does withdraw. I, I really did want to pull a double. Goes into the Necrozma. Necrozma. 
So here's the thing, right? I would not be surprised at all if he tries to set up rocks here, trying to KO my... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let me try to judge based off of that. Uninvested... Okay, so this thing should be definitely max HP. At the very least. Almost definitely. I think... I think I might go into my Meloetta. No, Meloet is not doing enough damage yet. I'm going to go into my... Blastoise here. I am just really afraid that this thing just get... Okay, get sets up the rocks. That's fine, I guess. I guess I'm not... Yeah, my team isn't too concerned about rocks, I don't think. Now that the Swellow's down... Swellow going down that early is pretty rough, but... I think we can be okay. I really do just want to click Toxic, though. I think I might. He could expect that switch into Heatran, but goes into... Hmm. So here's the thing, right? I, I could not imagine this thing wanting to do anything except click Swords Dance right now. And it is Toxic Heal. I think this thing clicks Swords Dance. I couldn't imagine not wanting to click Swords Dance right now. Um, if he does just try to hit me hard, then... I can go into Sheeman, I suppose? Does withdraw. Interesting. I don't know, I have no idea what this is. What did he expect me to go into? Um... The low pony gets dragged out. I feel like... I feel like I just rampant spin here. If he wants to hit me, he wants to hit me, but, uh... A rapid spin is pretty... helpful for the rest of the match. Except he has so many mons that mm, my team is unequipped to break. The Necrozma is going to be... goes for the Encore. Okay. So he roars himself out. Which, I mean, is definitely interesting, but... He could just be trying to... I don't know. Like I said, this thing is Toxic Heal, but Shaman would have to be the play, right? Um, goes for the Drain Punch. He will see that I am max defensive. And I do threaten Air Slash. So... He might want to go into... He might want to go into Heatran. That would be his safest bet. I could Earth Power. I feel like that's a bold play that I would have to make in this situation. I do really want to click Earth Power right now. In all honesty. I don't think this thing can stay in, especially knowing how little damage it just did. And the fact that I could potentially have Air Slash or some kind of Psychic for this thing um, as well. I'm going to click Earth Power. I think... I don't know. I honestly don't see a world where he, he, he doesn't go into the Heatran, possibly Necrozma, possibly um, Sneasel. Goes for Protect. Okay, fair enough. I got I got scouted. I got scouted. Now, does this Earth Power make him want to stay in? Because, I mean, Air Slash, Air Slash is a thing. 
Breloom. Uh, I'm gonna click Air Slash. I haven't revealed it yet, and I'm gonna reveal almost my entire set, all of my attacking moves. Uh, you won't know that my last move is Synthesis for a little while, but um, if he stays in... I think it's reasonable to expect that he might think that um, with Seed Flare and Earth Power being my two um, moves that I've revealed so far, that my other two moves might be supportive. You might expect a Synthesis, might expect a Leech Seed, a Sub, something like that. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if he doesn't expect me to have a whole lot of coverage. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I would really love to get this Air Slash off on this. Does withdraw. Okay, fair enough. So I will reveal the Air Slash for free. And this thing will come in here. But I will get an Air Slash, a, a Seed Flare off. And I'm reasonably sure that I take any hit from this thing. I need more damage onto this thing. Okay, so the only reason that I would go for Seed Flare in this situation right now is because I want to be in a position where my Scarf Meloetta can come in and um, really revenge this thing here. Um, I don't want this thing to Calm Mind up for free. Uh, if he clicks Autotomize, then uh, that would be really bad. We do outspeed this thing, which just honestly makes me think that this thing is autonomized even more. We do get the special defense drop, and as he goes for the moonlight, but uh, this is always going to be an exchange that I believe that I win. And the moonlight also makes me think that it might be. Oh no, it can't be set up because so far we've seen moonlight, photon geyser, and uh, stealth rock. So the other move, possibly calm mind. Regardless, now I do have a very free. Seed Flare. Now I do have a very free Seed Flare. But the thing is, now I have to decide if he's going to bring in the Heatran or the Breloom. I kind of want to click Air Slash. Oh, especially since I outspeed this thing, I could potentially um, threaten Air Slash flinches. Air Slash has more PP, and this thing is at negative 2 special defense. So, I feel like Air Slash would have to be the play does let me get the air slash off however watching me go for that's a crit do we no i i was kind of hoping that we got the that we got the um that we got the flinch there but we don't but here's the thing i, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this if he tries to go into the heat train right now the fact that he's not going into the heat train makes me think that it's a slow heat train I'm going to click Seed Flare. Man, but I really feel like I should click Synthesis. I can't be wasting my PP either. I can't be wasting my PP either. I'm going to click Seed Flare. Does withdraw. Do we see the Heatran? I don't remember what this is. Ooh, okay. So we will get a decent hit off on this. Now, here's where I have to start wondering what kind of hits we take. What? This is a Sneasel? What if it's a Bandit Sneasel? If it's a Bandit Sneasel, we potentially take Icicle Crash. Oh, if it's a Bandit Sneasel, we almost definitely don't take Icicle Crash. We have a very small chance to take it. We are at 133 HP. Uh, 87% chance to KO. If it's Bandit. Does he bring Band? He might not bring Band. I also really don't want to miss Eid Flare either. I'm going to... I really want to click, click, click Air Slash. Like, desperately, I want to click Air Slash. I think the Breloom or the Heatran might come in. I think he did this expecting me to switch or some kind of... Um, 
I don't think that this thing is banned. I'm gonna say that right now. Like, straight up, I do not believe that this thing is banned. Hmm. I 100% think that this guy's counting my seed flares, too. I'm gonna click Air Slash. Goes for the knockoff. This should be a KO onto the Sneasel, regardless. It's Life Orb. Okay, fair enough. Um, however, Life Orb... Jolly Life Orb... Jolly Life Orb Crash probably threatens a KO. As well. Jolly Life Orb Icicle Crash has an 18% chance to KO. Regardless, we don't get 5 owed or we don't get 6 owed And, um... I think the Sneasel is important for him. I think the Sneasel is important for him. I think that this is going to be... A decent step in terms of getting myself towards the finish line. Again, the fact that the Heatran has not come out yet... It just screams to me that it's a slow Heatran. Which means... That he's fearing Earth Power. He has to be. And the Breloom has to fear Air Slash now. I think what he's considering goes into low punny? Yeah. I think what he's considering. I don't take this. I need to find an opportunity to synthesis up with my Shaman in order to take on his team, but I really do believe that I take on his team. At level 50, high jump kick does 40%, yeah. Return does 32 to 38. What's that in terms of absolute damage? 67 to 79%, so 100% chance to KO at this range. Um, I'm going to hit up my Needle Queen right now. I'm going to attempt to set up rocks. And I am a very defensive Needle Queen. Goes for the Ice Punch, which is interesting. We take that okay. After rocks, we will get a very free set of rocks right now. Uh, let's see. Ice Punch. Now, uh, the only thing that I'm really curious about is if that confirms Adamant. Uh, no, I think it... Yeah, by the looks of it, it makes sense for Jolly Damage, which makes sense with Swallow, I guess. And, uh, I just set up rocks. If he goes into the Quagsire, then I, uh, hit him with the HP Grass. I probably just let him take me out with Scald in order to get in my Shaman and try to synthesis up with a free turn. Hopefully, potentially, maybe. So, kind of, sort of. Um, I don't have leftovers anymore, which will be obnoxious for the rest of the match. But, regardless, if that sequence of plays happens, then I'd be pretty darn happy. I'd be pretty darn happy with that ex with that exchange. Um, I think I can put my shaman in a position to win, or not my shaman. My well, my shaman, yes, my shaman's gonna be very, very important to me. But I think I can put my Meloette in a position to win, especially he does withdraw. Uh, I don't know what. I keep forgetting these names. It we do see this thing. I do want to get a Hidden Power Grass off, and I do want to gauge damage. Quagsire. Hidden Power Grass should do well over half. What is Skull doing? We, If we take a Skull, then that would be pretty dope. That'd be, oh, we should take a Skull fine. And HP Grass is pretty darn free. Um, if, if we do have this exchange of Scald and HP Grass, then I would be perfectly comfortable with, um, probably going for Earth Power on the next turn. Ooh, that is especially defensive. That goes for the Ice Punch. That's super interesting. Or it's as close to nothing. Um, this is... Oh, I forgot to give this max HP. Of course, I should have given this max HP. However, no other item. Should I... I think I 100% go for something. But again, this is the same situation that I'm in. Do I go for Earth Power? Or do I go for Ice Beam? Do, does the Heat Train come in? Or does the... Um... 
Does the Heatran come in or does the Breloom? Okay. What I'm thinking is... Hmm. What do I think? I really want to click Earth Power. I'm going to click Earth Power. Oh, no, I, w I really desperately want to click Ice Beam right now. I do. I really, really do. Earth Power covers everybody else except the Breloom. But I want to hit the Breloom. I'm going to click Earth Power. I think, mm, I think it's the safest play. Okay, okay, okay. We made the right play. End of the day, we made the right play. Also, oh, God. Okay. Um. My instincts tell me that this Nita Queen is going to be too important, or it's going to be decently important for the rest of this match, and I don't want to give it up yet, even though... A super obvious Photon Geyser is coming through. It actually makes me want to go into my Mellow Weta here. I don't see this thing going for anything but Photon Geyser here. I think he just wants to get rid of my Nita King, my Nita Queen. Does go for the Photon Geyser. Um, by all indication, this should be a special uh, Necrozma. We should be able to get a pretty darn free U-turn off right now. Um. Uh, I think he's gonna want to switch out. This is a, this is the situation where Heatran is the perfect switch in right now, or Quagsire. Maybe not Quagsire. He probably wants to hang on to the Quagsire, but um, again, the Heatran I feel like has to come in. I, the Heatran has to come in, and the fact that it's a physical, uh, okay. So that's interesting. Uh, I do get the U-turn off. This thing is going to... This thing is going to... Moonlight on me. It has to moonlight on me. I go into my Blastoise and I double switch. Or I go to my Blastoise and click Rapid Spin, right? Well, this, well, then this thing can set up rocks again. I go into my Blastoise, and I double switch. Maybe I go into my Blastoise, and I click Toxic? Okay, so here's the thing, right? No. He would want to... He would need me to click Rapid Spin first, because I'm slower. Yeah, okay. I go into Blastoise, and click Toxic. I think I convinced myself. Does go for the Moonlight. I think it just collects Photon Geyser for the damage. Have we seen this fourth move? Moonlight, Photon Geyser... Stealth Rock. I don't think we have. It's... I don't know. I'm gonna click Toxic. I think no matter what, it's gonna be the best play. It could be expect me to roar. Um, but realistically, I don't know what he would do in that situation. Maybe just just goes for Photon Geyser for the damage. But, um... I feel like Toxic has to be the play here. out speed trick room is this a trick room team oh no i i put a couple points of speed into my blastoise i don't remember exactly how much so yeah necrozma 79 um and blastoise is 78 i put a couple points of speed into my blastoise yeah so this is a yeah okay got it got it i remember now i remember now so I do outspeed, I can click Rapid Spin, and I will. Um, do I need this Blastoise? Do I super duper need this Blastoise? It would be super great against the Heatran, admittedly. But, if I let this Blastoise go down right now, then I start synthesizing up with my Shaman. 
I click Rapid Spin. I click Rapid Spin. Even the even if uh, this Rapid Spin invites rocks next turn, I get free damage off with Scald and Toxic is going to do its thing. Um, this Photon Geyser is going to do damage. No doubt it's going to do damage. But I'm in a position now where he's going to... Where he just wants to keep setting up rocks and... Uh, Toxic is going to do damage. It does click Stealth Rock. Now here's the thing, does, d d does he want to take me out? I think he clicks Photon Geyser. I click Rapid Spin. This is a stressful match. 100% this is stressful. Would he really go for rocks? Does. Okay. That's at the cost of his Necrozma, but, um, he did it. And my Blastoise ends up in this exchange with more HP than I would have expected. Although, the only thing that I'm going to be able to... Hmm. Is there a switch worth making? Is there a switch worth making? Part of me just wants him to take me out so that I could... Why is he keeping this damn heat train in the back for so long? It's stressing me the fuck out right now. I feel like I go into Diancie. Straight up high jump kick. That's a very easy switch into Nita Queen. Because what that's going to allow me to do is go into my Meloetta. And even if I telegraph the fact that I'm Scarfed, I don't think that I'm, a, that I'm in a position to care. Because the only thing that... um. The only thing that would want to switch into a Scarf Psychic would be the Heatran. And... We would be able to deal with it. I think we'll be able to deal with it. When all said and done. We do take it on 1 HP. But I think, realistically... My Nita Queen has to go down in order for me to scare this thing out with a Scarf Meloetta. With a very obviously Scarf Meloetta. But it's not going to matter as long as... Um... I either scare this thing out or I get a Psychic off. If I do get a Psychic off, then he's going to... Then it's going to... In that exchange, it definitely invites in the Heatran. And it's going to be a matter of whether or not... I want to click whether or not I want to go straight into my Diancy, uh, expecting him to want to switch into the Heatran. Although I could get a Scarfed U-turn off with my Meloetta. Hmm. 
I'm gonna. Mm. I'm going to click Psychic. Does withdraw. I think this might still be a 2 hit KO. And if it is, I have to take it. There it is. Okay. The entire rest of this match is going to be putting myself in a position where I can take out this Heatran. It's an Air Balloon Heatran. So that is fair enough. What is my sack here? I feel like my sack has to be shaman here. I feel like my sack has to be shaman here. Man, I could have gone into Blastoise. 100% could have gone into Blastoise. But regardless, I can bring in my Diancy. And I can click Moonblast. I messed up. I genuinely messed up. I thought, I was thinking to myself, if I go into this thing, I can click, I can threaten this out with Earth Power. But, he, he has no reason to fear that because of the, mm. but I don't think I could have ever done that unless I went into Blastoise right there. I don't know, I guess we'll get to gauge some damage. Uh, does drop the special attack, pop the air balloon, flash cannon. Okay. We go into Blastoise. I think, yeah, I think this Heatran is in a position to now just beat me. Uh, let me see here. And this is probably max special defensive defensive as well. Um, judging off that moon, it it can be just max HP, but it can also be max HP, max special defense. I don't think I have any way of beating this um Etran anymore. But did I ever really? I guess my only way was that Needle Queen. I guess my only way was that Needle Queen. I had no reason to give up my Needle Queen in the way that I did, and I think that that is going to be ultimately what wins the match for him right now. However... Flash Cannon. He is at negative one. We should actually take a Flash Cannon. Which is kind of wild, I think. I'm gonna click Roar. Does withdraw. And uh, Breloom comes out as I just click Roar. Brings this thing out. Um, and I think it's just in a position to uh, high jump kick and beat me right now. My only real chance was if it missed high jump kick, but, um, that's going to be it. Unfortunately, that's going to be it. I think, I think I did misplay. Definitely, definitely. 
I, I misplayed a couple times. I don't think that there was any reason for my Diancy to take that unnecessary damage, but I don't think that that made it much of a difference at, uh, at all. I think I think if I kept in the Needle Queen around, that might have been the only thing that could have changed things. Um, regardless, we can hit, hit, a, hit a couple Psychics and... Um, do negligible, negligible damage. Oh, does let me take this out. So it does let me bring it down to a 2-0. But the Heatran is definitely going to win this match. Wait, if it's... We might take a hit. I guess it doesn't really matter in the longer run, but... um, I guess it matters if we get a special defense drop. If we take a hit... And just get a special defense drop. Do we? No, okay. Uh special defense drop might have actually well no. Um he probably has mock punch and that would have uh sealed up the game. Okay, I guess a crit here. A crit nah. I was I, I was kinda open for the crit. Realistically, it kind of did look like we needed a special defense drop plus a crit, but regardless, I think I I think uh, I just couldn't overcome myself giving up that Nido Queen for really no reason at all. But I guess that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon. Um, uh, we will be come, we'll be back with the match against Regulator, which I've already played yesterday. But we will be back with more weeks to the UBL, with a few more weeks to the ICBA. And a couple of other projects hopefully coming up in the near future. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll be once again out.